New Year's resolutions. Why is it that so many people think they fail? You are listening to Debt Proof Living with Mary Hunt, brought to you by EverydayCheapskate.com. In today's podcast, Mary tells us why 88% of New Year's resolutions fail and how to make them work. Mary speaks from her own experience, from research done with financial professionals, and from information gathered for her best-selling books, articles, and speaking tours. For specific and personal financial advice, it's always best to seek professional help from a financial expert. And now, Debt Proof Living with Mary Hunt. Hi everyone, it's Mary. I'm so happy you're with me today for another episode of Debt Proof Living with Mary Hunt. We're going to talk about, okay, grab the table, brace. It's going to be a subject that you go, ah, I don't want to talk about that. New Year's resolutions. Why is it that so many people think they fail? I'm not going to do it anymore. It's just a big hoax. It doesn't work. I was that way too for many years, but guess what? I've completely changed and I cannot, I cannot wait to tell you what I've learned. But first, we need to do some statistics. And you know, <laughs> I think that if you want to find a statistic that you've already determined in your mind, you can probably do it if you Google long enough. But he, he, you know, here's the statistics. I, I pretty much believe this. See, see how you fit into this. Okay, so what were the top three New Year's resolutions in 2019? Here they are. Eat better. Exercise more. Spend less. Check, check, check. Right? Uh-huh. So guess what they are in 2020? The top three New Year's resolutions are eat better, exercise more, spend less. Uh, do you see our problem here? <laughs> Why are we making the same resolutions every single year? It's because we fail. Here we are, you know, almost a week into the new year, and we're talking about New Year's resolutions. Don't turn it off. Don't click, me th- don't click off to someplace else. Please hear me out. Because I have the best news ever, 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 ever. We're going to talk about the science of New Year's resolutions. Why is it that 88% of all New Year's resolutions fail? Why is it? And how can we make them work? Oh, this is so exciting. I've done this research. I've written about it many, many times, and I'm so excited. I get to talk about it for the very first time. Now, here's the deal. More than 50% of Americans reportedly make New Year's resolutions. So I bet you, you know, there's a 50-50 chance that you did that, or you're doing that, or you're determined this year. But 88% of them fail. People say this. They mean, they're, they're, I guess there's focus groups. There's all kinds of polls out there that um, report this kind of information. You know, 88% fail. That, that That's a serious fail rate. I mean, imagine if a car manufacturer had an 88% fail rate or, uh, I don't know, someone in building homes, they have an 88% fail rate. That, that's, that's disastrous. But there is a scientific reason for this. And once you understand it, you're actually going to learn how to change yourself for the better. I've got so much more to tell you in just a moment. Hi there. This is Julie Emerson, producer of Debt Proof Living with Mary Hunt. When we work so hard to pay off debt, pay off a car, pay off a student loan, or any loan, we look for any way to save money and save time. Have you ever looked for money-saving ideas at EverydayCheapskate.com? Everyday Cheapskate shows me fun ways to spend less money so I can save, give, and live. And that's exactly what I want for my life. That's what I want my life to be. Prepared, generous, and thriving. You can subscribe too. Just subscribe at everydaycheapskate.com and then share the favorite ideas you find. Save time, save money every day. Everydaycheapskate.com Okay, there is a scientific reason for this. And once you understand it, you're actually going to learn how to change yourself for the better. I I love this. I'm telling you, I've done this. This is the secret you've been looking for. You're going to be able to keep your resolution long enough to make it stick. See, that's the problem. 
we do it for five or six days. Let's see, here we are, huh, six days in, and, and all of a sudden we're going, oh, I can't do this. Here's the reason, and this is going to get medical or physiological. The human brain cannot handle New Year's resolutions. This has been a proven fact, and I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> it has to do with willpower and our brain cells that operate that particular mental function. You know, we think if I'm just strong and if I just have enough willpower, I'll be able to do this. You can't. Hello. If you are human and you have a human brain, you've got to listen to this. Your human brain is divided up into sections. I think we probably all know this from you know, science and biology, all those classes we took. Each section handles a different aspect of brain function. The prefrontal cortex, okay, that's the part located right at the front behind your forehead, right here. Are you feeling it? <laughs> it's assigned to the tasks of, all right, don't take notes. We'll have this all in the show notes. This is so fascinating. It is a sign to take care of staying focused, handling short-term memory, solving abstract tasks, and four, willpower. Okay, four things. Staying focused, short-term memory, solving abstract tasks, and willpower. But here's the problem. That part of your brain can only handle one of those things at the same time. It's not your fault. It's your brain. It's the way God created that brain. You're trying to make it do something it cannot do. It can only do one of those things. It requires a huge amount of focus and willpower to change a learned behavior overnight. Okay? Give yourself a break. That's why New Year's resolutions, they demand and why it's so hard to keep them. We want things to change. You know, New Year's Day, you live it up, then New Year's... Uh, this. I'm sorry, January 2nd, you know, you think everything should be changed. My willpower is here to kick in. I'm going to be focused. I can remember all these things. No, no you can't. <laughs> all right, so now that we've got that taken care of, let me just say that bad habits are really hard to break. And they're impossible to break if we try to break them all at once. So if you've decided to eat better and exercise more, and spend less, you are setting yourself up for a big, fat fail. It, your brain cannot deliver. It can't do all those things. It can't focus and give you willpower and all of those things at the same time. Medical scientists tell us that that prefrontal cortex is like a muscle. It has to be trained. If, you're jo if you joined a local gym, you would never dream of starting out lifting a 300-pound barbell on your first session. You might be like me. <laughs> you grab a two-pound weight for a two-minute session. They go, ah, oh, that's it, done. You work your way up slowly to heavier weights and longer periods of endurance. I mean, that only makes sense. So trying to keep a New Year's resolution to quit smoking or to eat better or to exercise more or whatever it is that you're planning to do or lose a bunch of weight, yep, that's something we all put in there somewhere, you're expecting your prefrontal cortex to pick up the equivalent of a 300-pound barbell on the first attempt and to keep doing it for hours on end. It's just not possible. So typically, New Year's resolutions go something like this. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to get out of debt. I'm going to stop smoking. I'm going to get organized. I'm going to give up sugar. I'm going to run two miles a day. Does anything there sound at all familiar? Those are abstract goals that your brain can't handle. They're too vague. What's missing is a plan. A plan to make the new behavior instinctual. That means you do it just automatically. That's what's missing in New Year's resolutions we make that fail before we even figure out how to get started. Here's the secret for how to make your New Year's resolution stick. And I'm going to give you that secret in just a moment. We'll be right back. Hi there. This is Julie Emerson, producer of Debt Proof Living with Mary Hunt. I feel like I'm a pretty creative person and can usually figure out how I want to save some time and save some money every day. But when I make mistakes and totally mess up, 
I'm so glad I have the support of Mary's Everyday Cheapskate community. At Everyday Cheapskate, I get encouragement and Mary's humor and great pep talks to keep going. I don't want to give up when life just gets difficult because it's going to. And when it does, I just need some easy tips to get me back on track. You can have some too. Subscribe for free at everydaycheapskate.com so you can keep saving time and saving money every day. everydaycheapskate.com Okay, here's the secret for how to make your New Year's resolution stick. I didn't make this up. This comes from someone named B.J. Fogg. He's a PhD, director of the Persuasive Tech Lab at Stanford University. Now that's impressive, okay? (laughs) You have to make the resolution a habit first and break it down to a tiny, tiny habit to start. All right, let's talk about a resolution to eat healthy. That sounds easy enough, but that is so vague. Do you see that? Thinking instead in terms of creating a new habit, a great response would be, I'm going to substitute the morning donut with an apple or a banana. That's it. See how small that is? It sounds easy. Human nature is such that if you do something every day for 21 days in a row, it will become a habit. Done deal. Continue for another 21 days and you've set yourself up for a lifelong behavior. That's six weeks to achieving that goal. You got it? Okay, let's try another one. Resolution, lose weight. Again, do you see how vague that is? Translating that to a new habit, a reasonable response could be, every morning before work, I will take a five-minute walk around the block. That's pretty easy, unless you have a very huge block. (laughs) But, But you see what I'm saying? Make it very, very small, very achievable, and measurable, okay? Five minutes around the block, you can measure that. Here's another one. Resolution, save money. That's a great resolution, but it's so vague. It's almost ridiculous how vague it is. So let me give you some tips for how to do that. Start with one tiny habit. I'm going to write down what I spend, period. I'm going to get a note card or a notebook or the back of an envelope, whatever it is. I am determined that I'm just going to write it down, whatever I spend. And I don't mean just cash, but if you use your debit card to get that coffee in the morning, if you uh, pay the mortgage online or write a check, write it down. Let your eyes lock Your eyeballs lock on that number and just write it down. Don't change anything else. You cruise through McDonald's to pick up some fries and a Coke. Write it down exactly how much it was. Statistics tell us, and I know this to be true, that that without accounting for what we're spending in some way, I don't mean you have to tell anybody. You don't have to get permission. You're just going to write it down. 10% of your money is leaking out of your life undetected. You know, 10%, think about it. If you make 500 bucks a week in your paycheck or 600, I don't know how for how much you make, 10%, that's 50, $60 leaking out. Just like, uh, you know, a leak in a pipe. You're losing that kind of money. You really can recover 10% if you will just keep track of what you're doing. Now, let me tell you, that's not the end of it. I want to teach you everything I know about getting out of debt, how to save money, how to live below your means. That's the whole key to changing your your relationship with money. But it's got to start with one tiny thing. I would love for you to become part of my Everyday Cheapskate family. I write every single day. And you probably think that I do this for the people in my family. Here's a little secret. I do it for me. It is my best maintenance program ever, just keeping my mind focused. I'm going to give you four last steps that you can take to make your New Year's resolution stick. Here's the first one. Step one, pick only one resolution. 
Your brain cannot handle more than one. Accept it. Analyze everything you've thought about to change and pick up that one thing that's most important to you. Step two, take baby steps. Make it tiny, even ridiculously so. A good tiny behavior is easy to do and it's fast. Think about this. Walk for three minutes or I'm going to do two push-ups. Make it tiny. How about I'm going to floss one tooth? (laughs) Any of those actions may sound useless, but that's the way to get started. Your brain will thank you by suggesting in due time that you increase that to maybe a four-minute walk or that you floss two of your shiny, pearly teeth. I know that sounds silly, but it's true. Absolutely true. Step three, become accountable. Write down what you want to change. That makes you more likely to succeed with your new habit. And it increases your overall happiness too. Tell others. Social support is really beneficial. And so is accountability. Last, step four, give yourself positive feedback. Or seek that from your accountability group or reward yourself with things that make you feel great. Positive feedback will increase your success rate and it will strengthen your desire to keep going by taking on another baby step and another and flossing another tooth and another until you are, you're doing all 32 of your pearly whites every single day. You know what's ahead for both of us? Permanent and glorious change. Isn't that what the New Year's about? Isn't that what we want? I want to wish you well. I want you to know that I'm at everydaycheapskate.com. I would love to hear from you. You can make comments there on the blog posts. There's even a form where you can send me a message. I would love that. Thanks, everyone. I'll see you soon. Thank you. You've been listening to Debt Proof Living with Mary Hunt. Debt Proof Living with Mary Hunt was created and hosted by Mary Hunt. Produced by Julie Emerson, with Harold Hunt, executive producer. Save time and save money every day. Make it easy on yourself. Just subscribe at everydaycheapskate.com. That's where you'll find all the ways you can follow Mary, follow Everyday Cheapskate, and Debt Proof Living. Thanks for listening. <laughs>